Hello, my name is Christopher Willey, and I'm a physician scientist in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And it's my pleasure to uh, present to you the author's take for our recently published manuscript entitled An In Vivo Model of Glioblastoma Radiation Resistance Identifies Long Non-Coding RNAs and Targetable Kinases. Uh, there are a number of people to thank, which uh, really is this an entire uh, co-authorship list, but this project was really led by my former graduate student, Dr. Christian Stackhouse. I certainly wanted to also acknowledge our funding sources, which are listed here. So this project is really focused on a, a real clinical problem we face uh, in treating uh, glioblastoma or GBM, and that is acquired therapeutic resistance. Um, the standard of care therapy for this disease is uh, maximal safe surgical resection followed by fractionated radiation and temozolomide uh, chemotherapy. Um, unfortunately, uh, the tumor pretty much universally recurs and the median survival is only 15 months from diagnosis. While there's a lot of research on this subject, uh, most models actually use more um, naive tumor models, uh, meaning uh, tumor, uh, tumor models that have, have never seen therapy before. And so uh, there really is a lack of acquired uh, therapeutic resistance models, particularly radiation, and we sought to improve upon that. So we took our patient-derived xenograph uh, program, our PDX, uh, for this disease and uh, generated some acquired radiation resistance models that then we profiled at a multi-omic level to try to identify uh, potential pathways of resistance. So um, this just shows uh, really how this was uh, performed. We started off with uh, testing a cohort of, of 20 of our GBM PDX listed in this table on the left. Uh, and we applied a flank radiation uh, testing model where the tumors uh, once formed were uh, given two gray three times a week for two weeks. And then we calculated the tumor doubling time based on volume. And so uh, using a cutoff point of 20 days, we were uh, able to identify uh, in blue uh, tumors that were inherently radiation sensitive, and then in red, the ones that were radiation resistant. And uh, we then took the 10 uh, radiation sensitive lines and tried to drive them to radiation resistance by doing a serial passaging and retreatment of uh, two gray times six fractions over the two weeks uh, until we developed radiation resistant lines. And we were able to do that for eight of the 10 models. And uh, the median survival went from uh, 35 days uh, to five days in terms of doubling time. And so these things, uh, really became uh, pretty aggressive tumors. This is just showing uh, selection rounds and then the before and after for each of these pairs. So when we try to characterize these at the molecular level, uh, what you see here um, is the whole exome uh, sequencing summary data. And in general, we found what had already been described in clinical literature, and that is that driver mutations are predominantly retained upon um, resistance or recurrence. And so what we see here is that if you do uh, the correlations on the left, in general, the parent and their RT pair uh, all tend to cluster closely together. And on this oncoprint, for the most part, you see many of these potential drivers tend to be maintained, though there were some exceptions like MDM1 and 2 and jx 14 p MIC here and, and so on. But for the most part, the driver mutations were retained. Looking at at uh, this a little bit closer, we did see some interesting uh, phenomena in a couple of our models. And so that's shown here with the 12Q14 amplification that we've identified in two of the resistant lines, the 1153 and the 14P. Uh, and this actually matched to um, some uh, uh, alterations that have been identified in the literature uh, for this exact same uh, lo locus. And so we were um, pleased to find out that our models at least tended to replicate some of what has been seen in patients. When we look at the transcriptome level, um, what we found similar to the whole exome is in general, the tumors tended to cluster very closely with their parent, at least at a global level. Um, though we were able to identify some global uh, differentially expressed genes um, uh, across the, the, the radiation resistant or the RT selected 
uh, tumors. And so uh, that's shown here on the right side. Um, what was interesting to us is that uh, among the differentially expressed transcripts, we actually saw a number of long non-coding RNAs. And so we wanted to determine whether uh, these uh, long non-coding RNAs actually also associated with particular genes. And so what we did is we developed a pipeline that uh, took the, uh, a number of uh, sources uh, uh, kind of highlighted here um, to identify long non-coding RNAs that were significantly altered. And then we applied a triple exitor algorithm to um, identify uh, regions uh, on the chromosome where uh, a triple helix could form, and then looked upstream and downstream using uh, bed tools to identify a potential uh, set of genes that could be regulated by that long non-coding binding. And so we, we look for the uh, correlation between the differential expressed genes and these potential link RNA DNA binding sites. And so um, when we performed this, we did identify a number of potential uh, targets for these link RNAs at the RNA and DNA level, which is summarized in, in this plot here. Um, we also decided to take more of a candidate approach and to look at our models on a pairwise basis because it seemed that with um, the amount of heterogeneity among these models, this might be a better tack. And so what we uh, show here are just, just two of our models, but uh, the JX39P and the, LX, uh, the X1153, uh, we looked at uh, gene signatures for DNA damage repair pathways, which would be expected uh, as a potential mechanism of resistance to radiation. And so what we found is that as indicated with red, um, this is, indicates an increase in this gene signature upon radiation resistance, um, whereas blue is a down regulation in the radiation uh, resistant models compared to the parent. And then what's uh, highlighted in these boxes are some of the key um, uh, connections and particularly with a long non-coding RNA. And so what I think the most striking thing we see is that there really are appears to be a few different ways to uh, develop resistance. And so this pathway here shows, um, you know, double strand break and single strand break repair pathways being altered. Whereas in this 1153, we really only see increase um, in, in this region um, and not so much in some of the traditional like um, homologous recombination in NHEJ. Um, what was interesting also for us is when we looked um, at global kinase activity uh, using our kinomics platform, we found that in general, the radiation uh, resistant or the RTS uh, models did tend to separate from the radiation sensitive parents. And so this did differ from what we saw with the uh, transcriptome and, and exome level. Um, however, once again, we found that the the uh, pairwise comparison was probably going to be more revealing. And so uh, what's shown here is just three of our models, um, the uh, network maps uh, produced by this kind of profiling uh, shown in red, some upregulated uh, kinase pathways that were predicted to be active in the radiation resistant model. Uh, and then we identified uh, a couple of drugs that could target uh, these uh, potentially upregulated kinases that have uh, known blood-brain barrier penetration. And what we found was that both uh, citrovatinib and brigatinib uh, were capable of uh, killing these uh, aggressive radiation-resistant tumors. Um, we further validated uh, some of these findings uh, using uh, a membrane arrays, and, and we really did see um, a number of potential pathways that were altered in the radiation resistant pairs. Uh, interestingly, the 1465 uh, pair actually had a number of downregulated kinases as opposed to um, uh, some of these others. So uh, to summarize uh, the findings from the study is we have generated a phenotypically and molecularly diverse set of models of uh, GBM uh, tumor recurrence in particular related to radiation and that we found some associations between long non-coding targets and cell signaling. Uh, what's also outlined in this paper is that 
Um, link RNAs could potentially regulate things like cell cycle, stemness, and DNA damage response, and um, particularly important kinomic profiling uh, from these models reveals potential targets for therapeutic development uh, for GBM recurrence. And uh, with that, I want to uh, thank you for watching our video.